It's a nightmare. <laughs> 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 yeah, our brains were, were, were forced to challenge certain concepts that once held firmly to certain biases, and we were, we were forced to grow. I don't. We are familiar with Ms. Green, but maybe as a demonstration for how much we, um, with Mr. Green, we are familiar with him. But to demonstrate to you both how much we've grown, I would like to ask. My colleague, Nikolai, please stand. <laughs> he was not that tall. <laughs> he was not, <laughs> not that tall. He was not that tall. <laughs> 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 Mr. Green, please stand. Thank you very much. <laughs> I hope I would have convinced you at least to some extent of the, of, of, of the extent which we have grown we will challenge ourselves and our minds will have stretched and expanded. Um, the value of the strategic analysis product um, <coughs> is critical to the region. The activities in the region have been conducting um, such analyses to some extent. And the level or the quality of the product would have been consistent with the training that the FIUs in the region would have had at that stage. Now, I think we can reasonably expect greater amounts of strategic analysis product and a higher quality. And equality is important because the value of the course speaks directly to assisting operational ent entities as well as other reporting entities. I think, um, I mean, I'm coming from a, a law enforcement background, I'm, I'm always trying to see how law enforcement can benefit. And I think law enforcement can benefit greatly from having a sound, well-structured, systematic, methodological report <coughs> produced to them. And you can take this and take it to the next level. Approach your policy makers, get what needs to be done, done. Um, so I'm, I'm very impressed with the course, I'm very impressed with the trainers, very experienced, very knowledgeable, and I think most of all, very willing to share and to impart that knowledge, uh, a virtue that I really appreciate um, in the trainers. In terms of, again, coming back to the academic level, which I'm really impressed with, um, to me it's similar to material produced and advanced by the University of Cambridge. And others such as Herman Goldstein who invented problem-oriented policing. You identify a problem, you bring the people around the table who are stakeholders in that problem, you come up with solutions. Little did I know that is really a strategic approach and is really a strategic intelligent product. And the approach by the CFATF, um, by the EU, is also strategic in getting the right people here. I appreciate that. In setting out the terms and conditions of the accreditation to try to ensure that the skills and expertise remain within the region. I think it was well thought out. They had a bit of time to be really thinking about it. So. <laughs> it benefited the outcome. Because it's here now, we're benefiting from it, and it, it can come at a better, a better possible time. So in closing, um, I want to thank Jefferson for the uh, opportunity to express all these thoughts. I hope I would have captured some or most of the thoughts of my colleagues. And one of the things you always take away from an experience like this is the networking opportunity. So I guess it kind of builds into the soft skills approach that this sponsor spoke about. Um, I think the region is stronger for it, having us trained as in strategic analysis, um, standardized training in technical analysis, and having us now uh, relate to one another, communicate, and build capacity informally as well. So once again, I thank you very much.
I now invite as Ms. Monica Paul, a clean project manager, external relations delegation of the European Union to address us. Hello again, everyone. Well, I have my paper, but I don't think I should use it. <laughs> but um, I just want to say um, thank you for participating over the last five days on behalf of the EU delegation. When we ask um, countries, organizations, um, one of my portfolios is crime and security. So when we ask countries, organizations, what do they need? Everybody says training, 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 training. You have to understand and appreciate it's difficult to fund the training. Because what happens? We fund training, we build the capacity of personnel. What happens? They dust off their resume, update it, go to the private sector or go to another institution. So the sustainability is always in question. Just as I will tell you, it took a long time for this whole program to be um, finalized and approved because every step of the way the same question was asked. What happens after we train 200 plus analysts and investigators? What's going to happen in the region? Are they going to leave the financial investigative units, intelligence units? Are they going to um, build the capacity and strengthen their units? What's going to happen? So I'm glad to hear you say the course was such a, at a high level, and I imagine it was difficult, but you all enjoyed it. And we are training you all also to be trainers to even further build your capacity. But there are serious questions we need to ask ourselves. So while from the EU's perspective, we are pleased to be associated with this training workshop because we recognize flows of illicit money can damage the integrity, stability, reputation of the financial sector and threatens the internal market of the countries of the region. The decision to support this project was not difficult since we recognize there's a need to strengthen the national and regional security cooperation structures and foster regional cooperation in the fight against illicit drugs and related crimes in the region. But while it is relatively easy to identify training needs and organize workshops to facilitate such training, the difficulty is usually when we ask about sustainability of training. In other words, what's next after you leave here today? This question must be seriously considered by you as individuals and also by your respective FIUs and CFDs as, as a whole. For your trainees, you have to ask yourself, what am I proposing to do with this information? I would like to suggest as professionals, you need to create opportunities to apply the lessons learned and information gathered from this workshop to your existing jobs, your existing jobs. You need to set clear and definite goals to practice and solidify your learning and create networks among your peers and colleagues. I asked earlier if you all knew each other and you all said no. So this is a start of building new relationships across countries, you know, so really set up those networks and continue them. In this way, you'll be creating a post-training environment. This is very important. Training is just a, it's not just a one-time activity. It's not a week activity. You have to build on it for the future. That post-training environment will satisfy your professional aspirations. You will also need to identify persons whom you can engage to support you in continued learning. So Jefferson's uh, discussed about having mentors, and going through the whole accreditation process. So that's what we'll be asking you to continue. <coughs> While I'm sure your facilitators were excellent, once they leave, it's up to you, and up to you as a team, to help each other to continue to learn and grow, okay? Because I want, at the next training session, the next other training session, I want to see some of you who have been trained today as facilitators also, and that's the purpose behind it, train trainers also. On a broader level within your organizations, you need to encourage your supervisors and colleagues to adopt new ways of working efficiently and effectively. The colleagues spoke about um, doing things a certain way and then coming and having your brains be, be, be expanded to do things differently or, or, or at least perceive things differently. And that is a challenge to go back to your organizations and look at things differently based on the new information you want. Keep in mind, that it is very easy to return to work and continue with the status quo. However, you should not even contemplate the idea of not utilizing what you have learned over the last five days 
to develop your respective organization. Finally, across the board as, as members of the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force, we need to find better ways of collaborating with each other and sharing best practices. A number of the member states from CFATF are going off to Gaffey Lab. Maybe some people think it's a language issue, that's why they're going. There are probably other reasons. A lot of the work that CFATF is trying to do, a lot of other organizations are coming in and crowding the same space to do similar type of work. And there's funding in that area. So we have to protect what we have as CFATF, as that organization, and strengthen it. This is how we have to strengthen our individual FIUs and FIUs. While I'm, aware, while I'm aware that this is easier said than done, it is possible if we urgently address the gaps and operational limitations of the information exchange tools currently in place. You must find ways to encourage systematic cooperation and information sharing. Since I'm sure that you're aware that the criminals are effective at exploring, exploiting fragmentation. They know where the gaps are and they, they are very good at exploiting it. If we give them those opportunities, I mean, there is a, a lot of the criminal work that you all are supposed to be monitoring. It's really a good kind of opportunity. And because so many Caribbean countries share similar security challenges, the EU is supporting efforts to address these challenges. We work systematically with regional